Pinning butterflies is actually a beautiful hobby to get into, and I think anybody who has a steady hand and a little bit of patience can really enjoy pinning butterflies. This is an official way to pin your specimen. If you notice, it's on a pin here. About a third of the way down is the specimen, and then another third of the way down, you can see there's a little tiny piece of paper. That paper will indicate where you caught the butterfly, when you caught the butterfly, what kind of butterfly it is, and that's if you want to like do museum pinning, like perfectly pinned butterflies, right? I'm gonna show you a little bit more ghetto way to do it because what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using these specimens to frame in a beautiful frame and hang in your home. And that's gonna be a little bit different. Step one in catching butterflies is to do your research on the butterflies that are in your area and make sure you are not collecting anything endangered. If you are contributing to the loss of the butterflies in the great monarch migration, you're in big trouble. So do your research, find out the butterflies that you can catch, get out there and catch them. And when you catch them, throw them in the freezer. So this does two things. Number one, it provides a peaceful death. They just slowly freeze and fall to sleep. Number two is it freezes all the juices that are in your body. And when you unthaw them to pin them, they are more malleable and they move a little bit more easy. If you've ever stepped on a dead bug in the gutter, they almost like turn to dust immediately. Insects are so fragile. So after they've dried out, it's really, really hard to work with them. You can do it. Here's one way you can do it. Get yourself a Rubbermaid. You find a butterfly that you love but was already dead. You can get yourself a Rubbermaid, get yourself some paper towel, get this pretty wet, set it in there, set your specimen on top, seal the lid and keep this sealed for about four days in like a sunny area where it kind of warms up a little bit and that will soften up your specimen that you're able to work with it. But ideally you wanna freeze it so you have all those juices and the, the specimen is, is more malleable. Okay, so this is an insect pinning board. It's great because it has a little adjuster. I can do it big. If I have a smaller butterfly, I can like do it a little bit smaller. But if you notice, it's got a slight V to it. So instead of the specimen laying completely flat, it has a little bit of a V, which, is, which works really great for museums. But what I like to do, especially like framing it and pinning it on your wall, is I like it to be flat. Look at this butterfly. It almost looks two dimensional with how flat that I've pinned it and um, beautiful butterfly, but I love that it's, that it's super flat, okay? So, instead of a pinning board, we're going to use just a regular old piece of styrofoam. You can save this from a package or you can pick this up at your craft store. This is all you're gonna need. You're also going to need pins, your insect pins. Now, <clears throat> this is an official insect pin. You can't see it too well because it's very, very slim. It's thinner than a regular pin. It's also taller and it's just a little bit sexier, right? So this is your official insect pin. You can get these off Amazon, but this is a regular pin that you probably have in a sewing kit somewhere. You notice it's a little bit shorter. It's a little bit thicker. It's not as cool looking, but the thing is, is that we're putting these in a frame. So this is a very long pin to put inside a frame. And if you were to get a shadow box, something to put this in, you're gonna need to provide something that is that thick in order to accommodate that pin. So what I'm gonna show you today is very tricky, but we're going to be removing that pin. So then you only have to have a shadow box that's only that deep for you to actually pin your butterfly. So it doesn't matter what type of pin that you're using, all right? So we're gonna go with any old pin, we're gonna dive right in. This is the butterfly I've caught. It has some pretty beat up hind wings. This is a Western Swallowtail. Now I put it in the freezer and when I did, I made sure the, the butterfly's wings were, were up, um, just kind of how a butterfly rests with its wings up behind its body. Um, that way will really help me in this pinning process. So you can see the wings are up, straight up behind its body. You have your abdomen here, and you can even see some of the dust that's falling off. These are small scales that are on a butterfly's wings. And the more you handle butterflies, the more those scales are gonna come off and it won't look good. Your, the oils on your hand are gonna completely ruin them. So our goal is the entire time we're doing this, we're not touching the insect's wings, okay? We're leaving them completely alone. Notice, so this is another one I have. Notice something on this moth, okay? It's a little bit exaggerated because moth abdomens are a little bit bigger but the abdomen is sitting lower than the wings. Can you see that? So the wings are flat, but the abdomen sits lower. That's because the wings protrude off of the top of the insect's abdomen. 
So when I pin this, I need to create a groove for that abdomen to live in so it can sit on top of the styrofoam and it can be completely flat. If I don't do that, then the abdomen sits on top of the styrofoam and the wings are pinned flat and it becomes kind of a teepee look. I don't want that, I want them completely flat. So on my styrofoam, step one is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm going to cut a groove that is exactly the depth and the width of the abdomen of my butterfly that I have here. Okay, there's my groove. Nothing too crazy, nothing too special. Just a little groove for that, that butterfly to live in. Okay, so here's my specimen in my hands. I'm not touching its wings, I'm just touching the abdomen here. There's three segments to the abdomen and the middle section is where the wings protrude out of. My goal is to get the pin in the middle of the abdomen in the middle of the wings, okay? So I got my pin here. Now, I want the pin to be exactly perpendicular to the wings. The abdomen has become a little bit curled over and a little bit concaved, but I'm just gonna look at the portion of the wings and I'm gonna stick my pin straight in there. Now, if you look really close, let's see if I can get, do you see how there's a little space in between the two wings? That's where your pin is going to live, okay? You're gonna send your pin right down that, that middle space and you're going to poke it in to the abdomen straight through your butterfly. Okay, so my pin is in. You can see it in the middle there. See that little gold ball on top? So I'm kind of losing the pin in the middle of those wings, but that's fine. So I have my pin, I can hold it right there. So I'm gonna take my abdomen, the pin, and I'm gonna sink it right down into the groove of my styrofoam. And so the joints of the wings, right there where it connects with the abdomen on either side, is flush with our styrofoam. Okay, so now our butterfly looks like this. The abdomen has almost disappeared. You can see the joint of the wing is flush with that styrofoam, and it looks like it's just alive and just kind of sitting there. But let's look, that looks pretty good. I might even tuck those antennas down into the groove of the styrofoam, but so far, so good, right? That's what your goal is. The next thing, you're going to get a piece of paper and some scissors, and you're just gonna cut strips of paper, okay? Maybe a half inch thick, it, depending on the butterfly. If you have a smaller butterfly, I would do smaller strips. This next part is the funnest part. The butterfly is pretty malleable right now, but it's also extremely fragile, so you want to move very slow. First step, take your piece of paper. You're gonna go in between the wings, alongside one of the pin. Slowly move that wing down. The paper I can touch and use the paper to stabilize the wings, and then I'm just going to pin it down using two straight pins. And then the exact same thing to the other side. Now I have something that looks like this, okay? And of course we want those wings up, we want them high. This is the proper way to frame a butterfly, have those wings up really high. But this is great because this is step one and it's the butterfly is now relaxing into not having its wings up but having its wings down. I'm gonna have more strips on hand. And the second thing that we're going to do is I'm gonna place my finger here so I can take out this pin. Do you see how the wing kind of fluffs up a little bit? It wants to still stand straight up. So I'm gonna hold it down with my finger, then I'm gonna take another pin, and right at the top of the butterfly, the wing is a little bit harder, and I'm gonna grab right there, and just ever so slowly move that wing up. And place it there with a pin. I only want that pin to hold it for a second, so I'm gonna get another piece of paper, and lay it flat and get some more pins in it, okay? Then I can take out this pin that's in the wing. And I wanna be so gentle. Remember, you never touch the wing, so you can use the paper to hold on to if you need to. I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. So I push my finger down to hold it in place, 
pull that pin out. And I'm going to take a pin, grab right below that little hard spot on the wing, bring it up. And you want it to be as symmetrical as you can between the two. So that looks pretty symmetrical. I'm happy about that. So I'm going to take another piece of paper. And so that wing sits flat. Now these two pieces of paper are kind of free, free floating right now, but they're still holding those bottom wings down. And you can see that this bottom wing has had a lot of damage done to it. That's all right. Now the goal is to get this bottom wing tucked up underneath this top wing. So I'm going to just take it and again just drag it up and push it in place. Now if you see the, the abdomen of the butterfly right here, it kind of shifted a little bit so it's not straight anymore. And sometimes if that butterfly starts rotating, you can just put pins on either side to keep that abdomen in a straight place. Now once, ooh, and see the paper started ripping into the butterfly's wing, so you got to be real careful. So now once I have that other wing in place, I just adjust, my, adjust the paper, put the paper on top, and I'm going to pin it down. After it's pinned down, I can pull out that initial pin that was in the butterfly. Same thing the other side. And slowly move it up. See how right here I've kind of crunched the butterfly's wing in order to tuck it underneath? That's fine, as long as you only keep it there for just a second. So let's put that piece of paper back on. Again, I'm looking to make sure that these are symmetrical. And then we'll put another pin in here. And then after that's done, we can take this out. And you see how that unfolds? You can even take your pin and kind of flatten some of it if you want. And um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty flat. Now, you can see right here, this wing is kind of coming off the styrofoam a little bit. And I want it to all lay perfectly flat. So I have, there's no problem with adding as many pieces of paper as you'd like. So I'm just gonna take another piece of paper and lay it over there and then just pin that down. and that will make it super flat. And just in case this part of the butterfly decides to do that as well, I'm just gonna do another little one on that side. And um, I kinda like to have a little bit of a control on the abdomen as well. So sometimes I'll even put a paper across the abdomen. Again, you can put as many papers in here as you want. The more you put in, the more it will stay down. And eventually we're just going to be taking all these out anyway. Okay, and then again right here, this is a little bit twisted. And I don't want that twisted, I want that to lay flat. So I'm going to be extremely detail oriented. And I'm going to take, just flatten that out. And this side of the tail has been lost but I'm gonna do it to this side anyway, just to make sure it stays down. Dang, that is looking pretty good. That's great. The only pin out of all of these that is actually in the butterfly is that initial one that we put through the middle portion of its body. And right now is the time to take it out because we want to be able to frame this pin and only worry about this like depth of field that's like this big rather than the pin, which is this big. So, very scary process to take out this pin, but what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna grab it and do a slight rotating of the pin to make sure it's loose and then slowly pull it out. Don't touch the butterfly, so if you wanna use an extra piece of paper to hold the butterfly down while you do it, by all means, but I'm just gonna take that and pull it out. All right, so, there are no pins that are actually in the butterfly. So what we do is we just let this chill for like, I mean, I, 
it probably would be all dried out in like three or four days but I like to give it an extra couple days just because you know don't want to take any chances better safe than sorry I mean you can let this sit here for forever this is a little butterfly that I did last week and you can tell that I just went to town covering it because I wanted it to stay flat and this is the exciting part is taking out all these pins and there you go you have a perfect little butterfly so the great thing about taking that pin out of the butterfly is that now this is another one that I had pinned a couple weeks ago I took out the the paper already but now I just have this butterfly and if I move it with tweezers what you do is you get a frame and simple as this you take a little dollop of hot glue and the hot glue kind of creates a mound big enough that you can just beautifully set that butterfly right in the hot glue adjust it so it's perfectly straight and you have a framed butterfly and you don't have to worry about that pin uh, in your frame well is that easy enough you guys think you can do it let me know if you have any questions I feel like it's super simple once you get into pinning beetles and grasshoppers it can be a little bit more intricate but butterflies are really easy and they're super beautiful so let me know if you have any questions thanks guys